Let's go ahead and update. Uh, let's update. Oh, well, I already got it. NES Classic Shadowgate and the remaster back to back. Okay, yeah, we're good. All right, let's go ahead and just load up this game. Oh, I'm excited about this. A remaster of the original. All right, make sure this works. Okay. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Is that catching on the screen? There we go. All right, we're good. Uh, and the audio is working. Sweet. All right. So I already set all my options. 1080p, everything's normal for now, but we'll probably switch back and forth between retro just, you know, for funsies. All right. Yeah, it says resume here because I tested it out yesterday just to make sure everything was working. All right, let's do new. We'll do classic. Uh, classic. We'll do classic. Familiar with Shadowgate and first-person adventure games in general. We can do this. Novice adventurers, gameplay is challenging, provides the longest time limits, direct hints of fewer opportunities to die. Nope, let's go journeyman. We're seasoned. I don't think we're like Iron Man mode or master level yet. All right. So that's the original track music, but all epic. All right, let's see. A great quest. Certainly it shall be these things. But for you, Young Jer Kathaker, soldier of Windermere, could it not be so much more? Could it not be so much more? In dreams, I have come to you, beseeching, entreated. This is cool. Ride south, boy. Take north for the dirk, a torch, courage. South? Ride south from Wizzlin, around the southern arm. Through the Waven Fairwood, past Myrithath. Wow. Beyond the citadel of Murlach Tor. They are name dropping a lot of areas. And the darkness of Tarketh's Pass. There you shall find my stone in wait. Under the shade of the mountain range, none have entered. Either on foot, on mount, these, these cutscenes are so cool. The oldest of spires. It harbors that which has been spoken of in whispers and described to legend. Shadowgate, the living castle. This is so cool. All is not as it should be. One of our own is now our great bane. Lack me here. Upon us, he has brought the ancient keep low, and it now lies fallow. It is there that you will find me, Lackmere of the Circle of Twelve. It is there that you will find this great. Quest. I thought Lackmere was the warlock. It is there that you will find yourself. Woo! All right. Oh wait, we can't use our we can't use our uh, controller. We're we're mouse and keyboarding this. All right. Welcome to the tutorial. Gameplay tips. Blah blah blah. We know how this game plays. Click on any object, and it has a rotary wheel with all the different commands. Got it. Uh, with Black Mirror's words echoing about your head, you stumble a bit until the world ceases its lurching. You stand before the gatekeeper. Mountain, an ornate door framed by a series of skulls is fashioned into the rock wall. Sweet. Yeah, so there used to be, well, at least the front of the castle shadow gate, you would just grab the skull and grab the key. But that clearly isn't there. Alright, so let's look. Shape of this indentation is circular in nature. Are they all circular in nature? Okay. A faint glow forms within the eye sockets of the bleach skull. You jump as the lower jaw rattles. Come on, boy. I haven't got all day. Pick me up. All right. I guess I'll pick you up. You nearly drop the skull when it begins to speak. About time, boy. You have no idea how long I've been here. You can call me Yorick. I have no recollection of how I got here, but I do know plenty about this castle. If you need help on this quest of yours, just speak to me and I'll give you a hint. That is a key. Metal key has several strange etchings. Got a key. 
Objects, yep, inventory bag, click, got it. To use one object at another, first select one object, use a wrench, and then use it on another object. Got it. Uh, thick green roots twist through the dense foliage. Can I grab it? You tug on the wet roots, but they slip from your grasp. Uh, let's just open up the door. Door is locked. Obviously need the key. There's sorted uh, items, archive, outfit, and spells. Got it. You turn the key, unlocking the door. After a moment, you toss the key aside. Yes, we're getting rid of items we never use again. I am a big fan of this. You can use the go command or double click to go through doorways. In some cases, you can also use the go command to move to a spot of interest within a room. Okay. We're walking. Hey, the evil eyes. Blackmere was a fool to send a child to do that which even the vaunted Circle of Twelve could not. Contain my growing power. Come if you wish. It makes little difference. Seal your fate within this living castle of the dead. The apparition fades, leaving a trail of cold air behind it. Do you see the lever on the right? Because it is a stationary object, the use command behaves differently. So you have to use the lever, select the lever, and use the use command. Okay. Lever. Use. Okay, with a squeal of protest, the lever begins to move. A few moments later, a stone slides away from the wall, revealing an opening that holds the key. What's the key look like? Spotted with flecks of rust. Put the key in your satchel. Alright. Uh, just a torch, right? Yeah. Do they all look the same? This is a long wooden shaft wrapped on one end with a flammable material, as it's more commonly known, a torch. Okay. Uh, I put the torch in your satchel. Oop. It is difficult to tell if this sling has been battle... Uh, has seen battle or simply used by a shepherd to keep his flock safe. Grab that. Huh, that's interesting. They give you the sling just outright. Oh, if I hit F2... It actually highlights what's what uh, what I can interact with. Like this. This circular hatch is made of a strange stone set securely within a mortared base. Oh, and then F5, I think, quick saves, right? Yeah. What does it say again? A low hum of power emanates from within. Oh, let's see if we can open it. Despite your best efforts, you cannot open the hatch. It seems magically sealed. So this key is probably useless, right? Okay, let's open this one up. Oh, it's locked, so I'm guessing we're going to use a key here. Actually, I want to I wanna look at this door. What the door look like? A strange pattern unlike anything you have seen before is carved into this solid iron door. Okay. You struggle with both hands to turn the key in the stubborn lock. A satisfying click echoes through the chamber as you toss the key aside. Yes, throw all those keys out. Oh, I can just double click to open it. In the lower left next to the satchel is a map. Map keeps track of everything, everywhere you've been, as well as interesting things you might have seen. In the lower right is your tor uh, oh, the torch. Oh, torch. And then the back arrow to go backwards to the previous area. Click and drag to move around the map. Use the plus and minus icons in the compass to zoom in and out. Click the middle of it to recenter. Okay. Oh, you can also use the mouse button. Yeah. Nothing else? Nope. Okay. Cool. Cool beans. You can save and load games anytime. Got it. You can learn spells from certain books and scrolls. Open the book or scroll, then look at it. Every spell does something different. Or in certain places. Okay. Uh, a damp, musty breeze wafts out. From behind an altar set within the stone alcove, you note that the long hallway continues further into the mountain. Hey, this is like the original. Uh, let's save. Uh, let's look at this scroll. The rolled up parchment is uh, secured with a wax. Let's open it up. Carefully open the scroll. Look. You read the message scrawled on the scroll. Fandrell, this missive is of utmost importance. We must coordinate our efforts. Seek my obelisk in the Acolyte den below the sewers. I fear the worst is upon us, but I have plans in motion that may yet avert disaster. It is signed with the name Lackmere. 
Okay, hold on, let's look at that one more time. Fandral, coordinate efforts, seeing my obelisk in the acolyte den below the sewers. All right, well, we're just gonna take it. All right, yeah, that works. Do all these torches look different? This piece of hardboard is wrapped in an oily rag. It would make an excellent torch. Are we gonna look at all the descriptions for all the torches? I think so. Piece of that, same thing. Okay, let's save. Uh, I'm gonna change some settings a little bit here. I'm gonna change the transition so it's retro. And we'll see what happens. Oh, and I think you can hit F1 to go between retro graphics and normal graphics. Ooh. Nah. I don't know if that's necessarily retro. More like just illegible. Not even illegible. I can't even see what it what it is. Yeah, that's that's terrible. Yeah, I'm not playing in that mode. Uh, let's look at the skeleton here. This is new. Giving the skeleton a quick once over, you find no obvious cause of death. You do, however, have a bad feeling about this. Let's open them up. Oh, you pat down the corpse. Your rough handling produces a piece of, par piece of parchment and a scroll, which you put in your pack. Okay. What is this? Seek ye the black axe. This brittle parchment contains not but a faded illustration in five words. Seek ye the black axe. Okay. Let's open the uh, scroll up. Scroll crackles as you unroll it. You read the message scrawled on the page. Brown, I have your dog. Okay. If you wish to see the flying ace again, then bring the skulls and squash I require to the place beyond the pumpkin door. But be wary, for only one outfitted for the hollowed eye can gain entrance. There you must carve my vestige and illuminate the sacrifices before per preforming or performing? Performing the spell of invocation. Then I will be freed, and this will all end cordially, DP. I want to change something else. I want to change the text so it's retro. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so we know if we grab the book, well, let's just l let's save it, and then let's grab the book just so it kills us, so we can see what a uh, what a death looks like. As you lift the tomb from the altar, the earth rumbles beneath your feet. In an instant, the rock floor gives way, sending you tumbling down a long vertical shaft. While the abrupt impact from the landing doesn't kill you, ten tons of stone from the broken floor finish the job. Let's see what the Grim Reaper looks like. Tis a sad thing that your adventures have ended here. Grim Reaper sounds like an old man. Okay. Is that it? Okay. So let's load. Let's load back up. Uh, quick save, right? Yep, that's where we're at. Okay. Uh, so we're not going to do that. All right. Uh, we are going to open the book, though, because there was a key in the original game. Something shifts under your feet as you open the book. I once knew a wizard who knew how to make this castle come alive, Yorick says, but apparently he's dead now. Sorry, lad. All right, so... Is that a key? A damp, musty breeze waves out from behind the altar set within the stone alcove. You note that the long hallway continues further into the mountain. I thought there was... No, I guess there isn't a key this time. Can I look at this book? You scan the ancient manuscript, noticing most of the language is inintellig unintelligible. However, one particular word stands out. I need water. From the rest, Invokan. You quickly write down the glyph, or write down the strange marking in your spell book. You have learned a spell. Alright, let's go look at our spell. What does it do? Translation of the spell is in my god, your mind glimpses some spectral person at the edge of your consciousness. Can we just use it? Use it on what? I don't know. On myself. Concentrating on the glyph, you release the power of the spell right back at your face. The magic dances all around your head, giving you an odd sensation that quickly clears up. Okay. So what's... Oh, uh, so here's the little secret. Uh, what is this? 
Strange markings and glyphs line the stone pillar that enshrouds this statue. One that depicts a hooded figure with a darkened visage. Okay. Well, so we have this little area, right? Same as the original game. You're piling on the stone with your fist. Your pain is immediately rewarded as the rock fractures and crumbles, revealing an opening. So we can go that way or that way. But well, let's go this way. Oh yeah, I love that transition. You force yourself through the narrow opening and into the darkness beyond. A figure moves within the opening at the back of the grotto. You hear the unmistakable twang of a longbow, followed by the whistle. Uh, he was back there. Of an arrow. Uh, if you want to see what objects in the room, hit F2. Got it. You instinctively jerk to the left. You see the glint of silver as the arrow misses you and strikes the rock behind you, shattering into splinters. Ooh, silver arrow. We can use that for the werewolf later on in the game, if there is a werewolf in this version. All right, so I guess we're just going to pick up everything. Let's save. All right, so what do we got here? Oof. So we have all these skulls. So I guess let's take some skulls here. You put the skull in your satchel. Uh, burn down a little more every time you use a command, with the exception of the look command or speaking to Yorick. Be sure to take any unused torches you come across. When your current torch gets low, simply click on it, hit use, and it'll be added. Got it. Uh, okay, so I can look at stuff. So this is different from the other game, because the original game... The torches were time-based, so no matter what you did, they went the same speed. Versus this one, certain commands, or each command will whittle down your torch. The skull is a bit smaller than the ones you've seen before. Alright, well, let's look at all of them. The skull is a bit smaller than the ones you've seen before. Oh, can I speak to them? You whisper nonsensically to the skull. You're quickly awakened. What's that, boy? Talk to me if you're going to talk to anybody. Alright, well, let's just grab everything. You drop the skull into your satchel. York shouts a warning. Hey, boy, did you see some movement in the shadows? Uh, am I going to get shot? Let's see. You take the skull. No? This is probably useless. <laughs> One look at the cracked and splintered bones of the ribcage reinforces just how frail life is. Can I take these? What is that? Eat? Eat bone? You decide against gnawing on the bone. Something about cannibalism just doesn't sit right with you. The bone has several patches of skin and sinew still attached to it. I'm just gonna grab everything. Uh, torches flame momentarily flickers. You are startled by movement within the cavern entrance above. Uh oh, I'm gonna get shot. Uh, let me light a torch. You light the torch and swap it out for one in your hand, dropping the previously lit one behind you. Okay. You sense movement within the cave above. Yes, I get it. I get it. I just want to pick up everything. <laughs> Alright, I've literally... Oop. Can I talk to you? Some type of creature moves within the cavern above. Nope, I can't talk to you. The hypnotic movement of the campfire momentarily mesmerizes you until a loud pop brings you back to your senses. Okay. I can't get up there, right? Let's save. Uh, you sense a furtive movement within the darkness of the opening. Something or someone is definitely up there. Okay. Can I walk up there? Nope. As you scramble up the rocks, a goblin appears, levels a bow at you, and fires. Fortunately, it misses and hits the rock at your feet. Unfortunately, the, the arrow ricochets and embeds itself into your left eye. Oof. I think F7 does a quick load. You have chosen poorly, young Jia. Oh, so he says something different every time you die. Uh, if you die differently. Uh, okay, what's the, what's the button to quick load? 
What is the quick load button? Let's see. Keybinds. Quick load, quick load, quick load. F9. So F5 and F9. Okay, got it. Alright, uh, I guess we're not going that way. So we can go to the left here. So we're going left. Right? A roughly carved passage leads downwards. Yep. In certain difficulty modes, only commands pertinent to the selected object will appear on the wheel. However, commands that do not appear on the wheel can still be performed using keybinds. That's odd. You can also hide the UI elements by using UI, blah, 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 blah. All right. You stand at the edge of a lava-filled chasm. Impossible as it seems, the faint, terrified screams of some unfortunate soul echo within its depths. Yep, I remember this bridge. We need to use bottle two. What is this? The carving on this keystone is of a circle within a shield outline. Strange writings cover the stone. You think you recognize the name Majal among the hearts of the cipher language. Okay, can I pick it up? You attempt to lift the large stone, but it proves too heavy. How about this? This half-buried carved stone appears to be a keystone. Okay. I don't know what that means exactly. A uh, warm and hoardy fire burns apart the brazier. The metal legs have been crafted from a series of hooks haphazardly welded together. Can I knock it over? <laughs> you punch the metal brazier with your fist. Bruised and burned knuckles are all you get for your troubles. Alright, let's save. I, I want to see what this death is. Let's go this way. The rickety bridge is held together with nothing but frayed rope and rotten wood planks. As if in warning, a mounted skull stands guard in front of it. I want to go. The bridge creaks and sways under your weight. Undaunted, you take two more steps before the frayed ropes and rotten planks give way, sending you reeling into the chasm below. Your screams echo and reverberate off the cavernous walls long after you hit the bottom with a sickening thud. Did I choose poorly? Is he going to tell me I, choose poor I chose poorly? Music? I wonder if it's random what he says to you each time. Interesting. Can I hit F9 from here? Yeah, okay. So many ways to die in this game. Okay. Yes, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Alright, so we're gonna go this way. From your vantage, you can see little of what lies beyond the passage. Well, we're just going. A dense frog greets you. Frog? Did I say frog? Fog greets you as the passage opens into a small chamber. The temperature plummets as a creature materializes in front of you. It flinches from the light of your torch. It's a wraith from the very beginning. Even though you've never seen one before, you know this is a shadow wraith. A being that walks the line between life and death. Between light and shadow. Uh, I'm going to save. Can I want to see what happens when I punch it? You unleash a wild punch at the shadowy form. Your fist simply passes through it. Yorick clatters his teeth, saying, It sure did get cold in here. Cold and dark. Yeah. I'm surprised it didn't kill me. Let's use a torch. With a cry, you swing the lit torch at the wraith. The ethereal being is instantly enveloped in a bright flash of flame. It's pitiful. Equipping objects. Notice the cloak on the ground. You can equip it and can be seen on yourself. Okay. It's pitiful moan resonating in your head. Okay. The wood of this torch is made of hickory. This will smell good once it's burning. Uh, very curious indeed. This appears to be a device for lighting your way in dark places. So many different descriptions. The fabric of this cloak has a wispy, almost ethereal feel to it. Grab that. And then we'll equip it. Right? Yeah. What does this do? Equip cloak? Oh, there we go. Ooh, you shrug the cloak over your armor. Now look how fancy I look. You look upon yourself with apprehension, not knowing whether you're fully prepared for this strange adventure. Game has been saved. Okay. This rune is firmly attached to the wall, glowing with power. Let's see if I can use a spell. 
You visualize Glyph in your mind and focus your will. When the pressure builds to an uncomfortable level, you release the spell with a word. The power dissipates as quickly as it appeared. There. Try as you might, you cannot pull the rune from the wall. Do I have anything I can use to pull it? Maybe the sword? You try to pry the rune from the wall with the dirk. As if held by some magical force, it won't budge. Okay. York yawns. Is this is as good as your questing gets. Maybe you can drop me off at the nearest tavern. You know, York... This skull is kind of an asshole. Kind of an asshat. The solid door is carved with strange designs and ornate filigrees. Filigrees, huh? Well, let's go on through. Yep, it's either that way or that way. What is this? A dense fog greets you. Has a stone passage open? No, blah, blah. Okay, we're going. We are... This is new. You wade chest high into the sewer water, wondering just how you got roped into this adventure. You're getting, uh, okay. The Triforce? Yes, Sean. That was definitely the Triforce. Let's see, where are we at? Oh, man, we moved all over the place. Oh, look, it even gives you little hints. Oh, look, here's a glyph, here's a little thing here. That's nice. Oh, I don't have to take notes, is what you're telling me. Uh, I mean, can we just swim forward? Oop, what is this? Oh, Epor. Ha 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 ha. The letters have been carved into the wall. Okay. They're meaning strangely familiar. The letters Epor have been carved into the wall. How do I... Oh, let me speak it. You speak the word written on the wall into the empty room. Epor, you say, with confidence. You were hoping this was going to be easy, but it's not. No? Alright. So there's no rope here, apparently. Although weathered and moldy, the scroll has held up well over the years. The glass bottle is empty. Chest high water fills the sewer. Oh, I gotta find a way to drain it. Can I just go grab this? Can I open it? You carefully unroll the scroll. As you read the scroll, one particular word stands out from the rest and tries. In your mind's eye, you see a glyph glowing with power. You're, as you write down the strange marking of your spell, the scroll crumbles in your hands. You have learned a new spell. Let's, go, let's give it a... Well, let me grab this bottle. You put the empty bottle in your satchel, and let's try the spell. I don't know. This? Drawing power from the air itself after a moment uh, you reuse the spell with the exception of an annoying headache nothing else resulted from your spell casting okay maybe try it on the water you gather your will and picture the glyph in your mind an uncomfortable pressure builds your bowels <laughs> that can't be good you think to yourself as a spell backfires in your face was that the one I just used calming your mind. You draw in power from your surroundings as you begin visualizing the spell. Vivid memories of your childhood distract you. The subsequent spell backfires in spectacular fashion. What is this? The iron door is latched shut by nothing more than a simple bolt. Okay. Now let me save it first. And then let's unlatch this bolt. You pull back the bolt, opening the hatch. Can I go? Ah! I don't even need a rope. I don't even need a rope. My bowels! Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> okay, oh, the mirror room! You jump and manage to find a handhold within the hatchway. After a frantic moment or two, you manage to pull yourself through. Uh, key binding objects. You can bind anything in your inventory. Select the object, hold control, and press 1 on the number pad. Oh, interesting. Okay. This room reminds you of the Elven Funhouse at King Otto's Fair. You remember taking your sister, hoping to lose her in the reflective maze. Okay, we got a bottle over here. With the exception of a crack, the vial is unremarkable in nearly every way. Fuck it, we're taking it! Take the vial. <clears throat> Large boulders have veins of quartz running through it. There's a broom. The large rock sits squarely on the floor. You attempt to move the rock, but are unable to get the proper leverage. Finding a handhold, you attempt to lift the rock. You feel something move, but unfortunately, it's in your back. <laughs> Don't hurt your back. Lift with your knees, not with your back. 
The large boulder has veins of quartz running through it. Let's try pushing everything. Finding a handhold, you attempt to lift the rock. You feel something move, but unfortunately, it's in your back. Again. Uh, let's take all these torches. Very curious indeed. This appears to be a device for lighting your way in dark places. Yes. If it looks like a torch, smells like a torch, and feels like a torch, well, then it must be a torch. This room, filled with mirrors, reminds you of Elven Fun House at King... No, 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 no. I'm looking at the torch. If it looks like a torch... Yep, alright, same thing. Grabbing it. Oops. What does the broom description look like? It's a bunch of bristles bound together and attached to the end of this wooden handle. Basically, it's a broom. Alright, let's save. Because I know some of these mirrors are going to fuck us up. The reflection in the mirror is a distorted image of yourself. Your head looks much larger than the rest of your body. Is this every mirror? You admire the dashing figure you see in the mirror. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Oh, my roommate ordered food. Use the broom on your bowels. I should. I should give it a try. I should give it a try. Uh, as you're looking at the reflection in the mirror, it bulges out a bit as if something is pushing it from the other side. So that will probably kill us. Although dusty, the surface of this mirror casts a fine reflection on yourself. So number three is bad. You catch some movement behind your reflection. You jump back in surprise before looking around the room. So three and five are bad. The surface on this mirror appears warped in an odd way. Either that or your hips really are that big. So three, five, and six are not good. So let's just start with the first one. You strike the mirror with a quick effective jab. The glass shatters with a crash. That it? You run your fingers across a jagged piece of the broken glass. Ouch, that hurt. You mumble to yourself as you pull out a splinter. Okay. We'll save. Hit this mirror. You hit the glass with a quick effective jab. It cracks, revealing metal underneath. The jagged crack Mars reflective surface. Metal can be seen behind the broken glass. You run your fingers and you hurt yourself. Got it. Alright, so three is probably bad. You nearly break your knuckles striking the reflective surface. Perhaps it's enchanted in some way. Oh, let's try a spell. Sweat beads your brows. You concentrate on the glyph and then release a spell. The power of your magic flies about in a spectacular fashion but does a little else. Let's try the next one. You visualize a glyph in your mind and release the power of the spell. The effect produces some pretty fireworks and a headache, but little else. Alright. Let's save. You nearly break your knuckles, striking the reflective surface. Perhaps it's enchanted in some way. Uh, do I want to try the spell on that one? Uh, yeah, let's try the spells. You concentrate, blah blah blah, you release it, and nothing happens. Yep. And what about this one? Concentrate, nothing happens. Okay. Save. You nearly break your knuckles, strike the reflector, perhaps it's enchanted. You hit the mirror with a quick effect jab, shatters with a crash and a tinkle of glass. Tinkle? Like a pee pee? Little pee pee of glass? Can I grab any. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. It refuses to break any further. You run your fingers across the jagged charge, blah blah blah, blah blah blah. Yeah, okay. There's metal behind this one. I mean, maybe if I use one of these spells to finish the glass? I don't know. No. Let's try the last spell. Um, visualize a glyph. No. Man, these spells suck. Yeah, these spells suck. Alright, let's get back out of here. Okay. We can't do anything here just yet, so let's go back. Uh, dense fog, the Triforce. Did I do the spell on this? Let me see. I don't know if I did or not. Can I combine spells? Yep, nothing happens. 
combining the spells failed. No. What if I do it the opposite way? Yep. Doesn't do, doesn't work. Does not work. Uh. Can I use my can I use my sword? Hold on a second. Let me go back. PP. <laughs> okay. Let's try. Let's try using this. Use a jerk on the mirror. What about the bone? Can I use a bone on the mirror? There's nothing is happening after a few minutes. You stop trying to use the bone on the mirror. Yeah. Okay. We can't do anything here just yet. What does our map? Does our map keep track? Yeah, it just shows mirrors. Okay. All right. I'm trying to leave. I'm trying to leave. Okay, we can't go over this just yet, because we don't have bottle two. That's empty. Exception are cracked, the vial is unremarkable in every way. Yeah. If I hit it. Yep, you smacked the vial hard enough to break it. <laughs> yep, I smacked the vial hard enough to break it. Well, that must mean we don't need it. If I can break it that easily. Yeah, goblin, goblin, goblin. I got it. I got it. I got it. Yep, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. And then I'm going to the right. You can search and loot various objects in the game by selecting the object and then using open or loot or use corpses, desk, bags, chests. Got it. A series of ancient doors encircle this small hallway. It looks as if a battle may have been fought here. You rummage through the sack, finding dice, a scroll, and a gear. Taking these, you didn't discard the sack. Well, let's look at the scroll. Let's look at all this first. The large gear has a series of runes and glyphs inscribed on it. Okay. No, 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 no. Cancel, cancel, cancel. Uh, what do you, what you expected? Blah, blah, blah. Let's look at the dice. Dice like these are typically used by fortune tellers. Each face of the die contains a different symbol that, when rolled, can divine one's future. Shadowgate, Ricky Fingers 187. Welcome to the stream, buddy. Yeah. Not sure if you've been lurking or if you just arrived, but uh, we just finished the classic version of Shadowgate on the NES, and now we're playing the remastered version, which is surprisingly way different than uh, the original. I thought it would have just been same game but with better graphics but no there's a lot of new stuff here uh, each face of the die contains a different symbol that when rolled can divine one's future yeah our plan is to eventually finish the remastered version play and then play the two sequels to Shadowgate not you know all in one stream but yeah there's Beyond Shadowgate which was a sequel on the TurboGrafx-16 and then there's Shadowgate 64 which is you know obviously on the 64 all right, what do we got here? We have a skull, a deep gouge. We're just gonna pick everything up. We're picking everything up. We don't even care. Picking up bones, skulls, everything could be useful. Can we pick up a rib cage? Yeah, let's pick it up. Oh, we can open it up. What's in here? As you rummage through the rotted clothing, you note nothing that interests you. Can I speak to it? You mumble something to the skeleton. Yorick lights up. You shouldn't speak to dead things. Or, um, wait a minute. Alright, what do we got? Besides that, we have three doors. Three doors down. The band. Alright, let's open this up. With a grunt, you push the door open. Be sure to check behind every nook and cranny, boy. There's bound to be ways to power this place up. Yorick war warns you. Uh, let's see if any of these doors are locked. The creak of protest. Door opens. With a grunt, you push the door open. All right, cool. So, no keys to worry about. Let's roll on. Double tap E, keybind to lock it. Double tap E, keybind to lock it. You can pre perform that command several times, multiple times without reselecting it. Now I'm good. Right click anywhere to deselect. You can also double click on objects to look on them, unlock doors to open them, and open pathways to go through them. Got it. Teeth chattering, you stand within the cold cellar, hugging yourself for warmth. 
A creature made of ice hovers playfully on the far side of the room. Oh, I don't know if you guys have seen the retro view of this. You just hit F1 and wham. The game looks like shit. <laughs> super, super pixelated. I can't see anything, so we're not going to play that way. A uh, creature made of ice hovers playfully on the far side of the room. All right, what can we interact with? Uh, let's grab the torches. All right, an oil-soaked rag wrapped around an end of a torch. <laughs> Congratulations, you earned the torch bearer achievement. I have all the torches. <laughs> it is a long wooden shaft wrapped in one end with a flammable material, or as it's more commonly known as a torch. Got it. Oh, I see a key right there. Okay, uh, what is this? A frozen mass, perhaps that of a massive arachnid, is encased in a thick layer of ice. You shake your head, wondering what the thing is and how it got to its predicament. There's a scroll here. So there's a scroll, a key, and a giant ass spider. A long white object is frozen in this piece of ice. Can I use... Let me save. Can I use a torch to melt these? Yes, yes I can. Uh, eventually the ice built away, revealing a torch. Or a torch. A scroll. Open up the scroll. Maybe it's a new spell. Yeah, a new spell. As you scan the scroll, one particular word almost seems to jump out at you. A gap. A gap. In your mind's eye, you see a glyph glowing with power and quickly write down the strange marking in your spell book. Before the scroll crumbles in your hands, you realize that you have learned a spell. Cool. Okay. Uh, let's see if we can get that... Let's see if we can get that key... You thrust the lit torch into the ice. After a moment, it begins to melt before finally revealing the key it had, it had encased. The wrought iron key is half a hand in length and pitted throughout. Taking that. You put the key in your satchel. Alright. Um, this door locked. This frost-covered door sits firmly within its stone frame. Save the game. Can I talk to this creature? A strange entity made entirely of solid ice and cold vapor hovers about the room in front of you. <laughs> Not knowing what to say, you introduce yourself to the elemental. The creature replies by blowing air in your face. What if I hit you? Will you kill me? <laughs> the icy elemental evades your blow, dancing just out of reach. What if I take you? It chill runs up your spine and paralyzes your arm as you try to grasp the elemental. The creature easily dances away. Can I use you? No. What if I use my torch on you? How about that? What if I just kill you? Try as you might, you cannot light the ice elemental on fire. What if I use this new spell? Can I use this new spell on you? The chill from the elemental causes you to miscast your spell, creating a small explosion. <laughs> the ice elemental responds by blowing cold air in your face. Can I open this? You put your shoulder to the door and shove it open. Okay. Can I actually get this spider free? Let's see. The flame is much too small to melt the ice and free the creature. Oh, it's a dragon area from the first game, or from the original game. The smile, smell of brimstone rises within this chamber as a pair of glowing eyes watch your every move from an opening in the far wall. All right, so from the first game, I know you pick up the shield first. Well, let's get, let's get killed just to see what the death looks like. Because we're all about seeing how we die. You attempt to open the chest, but it has been welded shut from the heat. Boom! The dragon shifts its weight and gathers a breath. With a roar, the ancient be beast releases a scorching stream of fire at you. Quicker than you thought possible, the flame engulfs you. You scream in excruciating pain as your flesh is seared from your bones. That's pretty cool. And then we can see the Grim Reaper. Tis a sad thing that your adventures have ended here. Alright, got it. Skip. Alright, let's reload our game. We're gonna finish we're gonna finish the game, but we also want to see how many different ways we can die here. Are you playing on Master Mode? No 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 no. Um I'm playing on journeyman mode. This is my first time playing the game, so I know there's a lot of new stuff. So I don't want to prematurely screw myself over. Uh, okay. All right. 
So we have... What do we have? Can I look at stuff without getting burnt to death? This dented helm looks a bit small for you. Okay, cool. I can pick up stuff. Okay, let's pick up the shield first. This iron shield looks as if it could protect you from anything. So we need the shield. And we need the spear for the troll that's uh, at the bridge. The dragon shifts its weight and gathers a breath. With a roar, the ancient beast releases a scorching stream of fire at you. Quicker than you thought possible, the flame engulfs you. Wait, what? You scream in excruciating pain as the flesh is seared from your bones. What? I thought we could grab the, uh... Huh, weird. What a pity that you have failed so that's different from the original game. Hmm. Let's try this again. Let's try this again. So I can't use... Can I use? Use. Use shield. Use shield. How about that? Use a shield on what? This dude. With halting, shaking steps, you move towards the dragon. Alright, I'm dead. The dragon shifts its weight and gathers a breath. Blah, blah, blah. Yep. Alright, so I can't use the shield in this game? Maybe I gotta use a spell. Is a sad thing. Yeah, maybe I gotta use a spell. Here I am thinking it would just be like the original game. Hmm. Uh. What is this? The distant smell of brimstone fills this chamber. Can I use a spell on you? That guy has glasses on, doesn't he? Has a pair of glasses melted to its head. Ugh. Alright. Let's try some spells. It's probably gonna get me killed. No. Okay. No, 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 no. Nope, nope, nope. Quick load. I can't quick load. I can't quick load. Okay, so I absolutely cannot do this part. I do have a key. So maybe there's another door I can go through. Huh. Can I speak to the dragon? This is probably gonna get me killed. With all the authority you can muster, you tell the dragon to sit. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if I'm supposed to pick up a different item then. So apparently, this dragon is not house trained. Alright, let's do this again. Do I need to pick up something else? Uh, what else can I interact with? What do I have in my, in my inventory? Uh, I have a key, and then I have this gear, and then I have dice. Huh. You sense a great deal of intelligence behind the glowing eyes of this dragon. Intelligence and hunger. Do I have any food I can give him? No. Uh, what about the spear? The spear apparel is perfectly balanced and one end has been sharpened. I'll try picking up, but it'll probably kill me. It will probably kill me. Spear into your satchel. Yeah, and then it kills me. Yeah. Yeah, how do I grab that shield? I, gra I grabbed the shield, right? Or did I accidentally grab the spear? Hold on. Let me try grabbing the shield again. That. Grab the shield. Oh, equip the shield. Equip shield. Oh, okay. Semantics. Here we go. You last the shield securely to your forearm. With a roar, the ancient beast releases a scorching stream of fire to you. You raise your shield of, uh, your shield of iron. Your iron shield, just in time to block the dragon's flame. Dispersing it harmlessly to either side of you. Okay. Grab the spear. And the torch's flame momentarily flickers. And it releases a superheated stream of fire. You lift your iron shield again and block it. How does that go? Out of the fire and into the dragon's den? Yorick offers helpfully. Um, I don't think the helmet was useful for anything. I think the hammer kind of was. 
And the glasses. There was a pair of glasses that were used for something. Ew. Let's try it. Put the hammer in your satchel. Fires this blast of scorching flame right back at you. Erasure. While the shield protects you, it glows red hot. Let's see. Will this kill me if I pick up... Uh, let's see, I picked up shield, spear, hammer. If I pick up a fourth item, what happens? You drop skull to your satchel. You manage to raise your shield in time. However, the fire is taking its toll on the shield, it begins to melt. Can I pick up one more thing? Let's try it. Nope, we're dead. Oh, with the remnants of the shield. While you're safe, the shield finally subscum succumbs to the dragon's breath, completely destroyed. Alright, we can't pick up anything else. But it's not like we need that skull. So let's get the hell out of here. Alright, I need... I need to uh, light a torch. There we go. Oh, right. This. You light the torch and swap it out for one in your hand, dropping the previously lit one behind you. Okay. What can we do here? What can we do? Can we combine spells? Is there a way to combine spells? Combining the spells failed. No, it didn't work. What else can I look at here? Nada. What do I got? What do I got? I have a gear. Can I open this up? No. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> can I talk to it? You clear your throat and address the skull. Yorick awakens with a shout of surprise. Herschel, is that you? Keep your eyes peeled, lad, mainly because my eyesight isn't as good as it used to be. Hefty war hammer is finally crafted and inlaid with gold. Can I do anything with it? No. Can I use it on a skull? You swing the hammer in a wide arc, landing a glancing blow on one of the icicles. You're rewarded with a shower of ice flicks. Huh. What else can I do? And this key, what does this key look like? The wrought iron key is half a hand in length and pitted throughout. I need to kill... I need to kill this ice creature somehow. No. Passes through. What else do I got? Can I sweep him to death? Can I, uh... Can I load this in my sling? Be able to do anything instructive to the sling? Do I need stones? Or do I have an endless supply? Let's try it. Nope. Dance is out of reach. I don't think the sword would do anything. Let's try that. Nope. I do have a hammer that I can use to finish smashing the mirror room, right? <laughs> yeah, so... Dragon's Nest. Small hall. Oh, and there are a bunch of other doors I can go through. Alright, let's just go back. We'll come back to this. All right, so we need to go, let's go north. Uh-huh, the coffin room. With tombstones, tombstones, with stone tombs lining the walls of this musty crypt, there is an ancient, almost reverent air to this place. Save it. Grab all the torches. Torches formerly secured to an iron bracket. Oh no. This torch is welded. What about this one? Strong iron bracket secures this to the wall. Damn. Okay. I'm guessing all three of them? Yep. Well, we can at least light them, right? Torch bursts into flames. Maybe this is part of a puzzle. I don't know. Did that do anything? No, it did not. Okay, so it's saved. Oh, let's just start opening stuff up. Because I know one of these things has a slime in it. A horrific creature's release, letting out a piercing cry that cuts into your very being. It's a banshee. Well, you've seen the visage of the Warlock Lord, and now you have been cursed. Both of these things are time limits in the game. It's important both to cure yourself before you die and to stop the Warlock Lord. 
before he destroys the world. Sounds about right. I'm back! Welcome back, Simon! We have finished the, uh, the classic Shadowgate, now we're working on the remaster. Which is quite, quite different from the original. So now I'm... Now I'm cursed. Great. Some objects in the game are flammable. Set an object on fire by selecting your current church. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. Right. Be sure not to burn something that might prove useful later on. Are you serious? Played this for a couple of hours, but for some reason it just didn't resonate with me as much as the original. Uh, like, so far, I, so far I like it. I mean, granted, I've only been playing it for, you know, about an hour. But, uh, I like seeing the updates. I'm unsure about all the additions they've made. I've changed a couple of settings to make it more retro. Like, the... The text is retro, so it's like written out with a pen, and then the transitions from different rooms are uh, the same. Uh, the same sound effects from the original. Arbinger of Death, stabbing pain before the you feel a like momentary stabbing pain before the specter winks out of existence. All right. I don't know if I want to say. I'll save it as a curse save. Uh. Okay. All right. Well, cool. I can't even name it. Let's open up something else. The lid slides open with a grating moan. Your vision clears and the episode passes. Whoa, that was intense. I should burn all these guys. You're surprised... These remains are wrapped in very old linen cloths. You are surprised that you could still smell the nauseating odor of embalming fluid. Hey, Simon, have you ever played... I know, I think you said you played Shadowgate 64 and you didn't like it at all. Did you ever play Beyond Shadowgate on the Turbo Graphics? I'm curious what that game is like. Let's burn some stuff. The ancient rapids quickly go up in flames. As the mummy is consumed, a sword that was buried inside is revealed. Okay, that wasn't there before. Can I grab the sword? Oops. That slammed shut. I just closed it. Oh, it's it's below me. It's below me. What am I thinking of? Did not play any other Shadowgate, not even 64. Okay. This long sword is ornately carved and of excellent, excellent craftsmanship. However, the blade looks dulled by age. Give me that. I did not play many 64 games. Yeah, neither did I. Um, I'm just trying to think, what game did I play on Nintendo 64? And actually complete? I don't think anything. Like, I didn't own a Nintendo 64 growing up, but, you know, I, I played a little bit of Super Mario. I played a little bit of Castlevania 64. But, yeah, yeah. No, I was more of a PlayStation guy. Well, I originally had a Sega Saturn, but then after Sega Saturn was crap, <laughs> I went to a PlayStation. It wasn't crap. It was just they didn't release too many games for it. No Nintendo 64 as a kid, I was a PC elitist. <laughs> PC Master Race. All right, let's burn all these dudes. Let's burn these dudes. Ooh. As a mummy burns, a shield that was wrapped inside falls to the floor. Oop, what am I doing? Here we go. Get off me. Get off me. There we go. I think I only finished Ocarina of Time, and that's about it. I actually have Ocarina of Time on the 3DS, but I only play it, you know, when we're traveling, so... I still, I think I'm about halfway through the game. I did finish Wind Waker recently, which is a, an amazing game. But I'm not a huge Zelda fan outside of the classic ones. Uh, wooden Shield, yeah. We're taking everything. We have unlimited inventory space, and they don't keep track of weight. This is entirely all carry on. Uh, now let's save. No slime? No slime. What about the last one? The ancient wrappings are so dry that they almost disintegrate in the flames. As it burns, a skull tumbles to the floor along with a scroll that escaped the fire. Hey, skull. A faint hum of power rises from the strange symbol on the skull's forehead. The mark doesn't appear to be carved, but rather fused into the bone. Ooh. Interesting. You pick up the skull and feel a faint trace of power coursing through it. You unroll the scroll, careful not to destroy it. I realized with the years that... Oh, I pretty much... Uh, that I, I pretty much only like A Link to the Past, one of my favorite games. I don't really like how the series has evolved. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the new of, of the new Zeldas either. 
Like, I like the original Zelda on NES. I even like Zelda 2. And then, of course, I liked Link to the Past on Super Nintendo. But outside of Wind Waker, I didn't like Twilight Princess. Um, Ocarina of Time, uh... I mean, maybe if I played it back when it was released, I would be impressed, but it's very... doesn't seem like it aged well. I uh, never played Majora's Mask, but I imagine it's just like Ocarina of Time. Wind Waker I liked because it was more open-ended. And I never played Skyward Sword. And I haven't played... Uh, what is it? Breath of the Wild? The one that's on Twitch? And I never played any of the ones on uh, Portable. Like Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, 3DS, whatever versions they have. A uh, drawing of a castle with a single tall spire in the center has been scrawled on this parchment. A single line points to the exact middle of the tower, and next to it, these words, three times right, then once pulled down, twice past midnight, points a ruined crown. Light becomes dark, the king sits a throne, the masked one revealed shall mark the stone. All right, we're not going to even try to figure that out right now. We're just going to grab it and go. All right, we'll save. And the lid opens with an eerie creak. Light him on fire as the ancient wrappings go up in flames. And ama an amazing, an amazing gold scepter and leather sack fall to the ground. Yeah, this game is way different from the original. It's weird admitting it, but it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I've I've been tired of the Zelda formula for like quite some time. So it's it is what it is. Uh, an ancient symbol shimble symbol showing two griffins locked in deadly combat is crafted onto this gem encrusted scepter. Okay, cool. I mean I guess I'm picking it up. You drop the scepter into your satchel. And we got a sack made from a thick burlap. Let's open it up. You rummage through the thick burlap and find a scroll. You take this while discarding the sack. I love that this game discards keys and sacks as soon as you use them. I always hated having a cluttered uh, inventory. All right, where is this? Let's open this up. You tear the paper slightly as you unroll the parchment. While the writing is difficult to discern, you manage to glean a few key phrases. The danger is real. Alert the surrounding lands. Seal off the passages into the Gatekeeper Mountains. The wax seal shows an eagle in flight and is signed by someone named Fandril. Hmm. Okay, let's open this one up. Knowing it might be important, you carefully unroll the scroll. This handwritten scroll is faded and difficult to read, but you make out one passage. When Maj Majal's tail lights the northern skies and the alignments are an epigee, apogee, then you shall water, then shall the water nourish the tree, and the eagle shall fly with wings of fire as it is watched by the all seeing eye. God, this shit makes no sense. Alright, whatever. We'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. I'm sure it means something. Alright, let's save it. Uh, let's. What is this? The figure carved on the lid of this tomb has a mischievous, feral look to it. It is holding two upside-down torches. Okay. Open it. You try to open the crypt. However, it's fused shut. Two upside-down torches? That means I can light it up, right? Let's try it. You attempt to use the lit torch on the crypt, but fail to accomplish it. Can I actually click on the torches themselves? The figure carved on the lid of this tomb has a mischievous, feral look to it. It is holding two upside-down torches. I can't do anything else with it. What do I got? What do I have in my inventory? One second. I need to blow my nose. I am mostly okay, but I am still slightly congested. Let me just, you know, uh, mute the mic temporarily. You don't want to hear this. It's nasty. Huh. All right, we're back. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Spear, 
scepter. We have a skull with a symbol on it. If I look at it again, what happens? Helm of power rises from the strange symbol on the skull's forehead. Rather fused. A lot of fusing going on. Okay. Uh, what does my map show? Yeah, it's an arachnid. Uh, is there anywhere else for me to go? Nothing else for me to interact with? No. Okay, let's go back. Ancient doors. We haven't been through the one on the far right, right? No. So let's go that way. Oh, this place. The lake with the shark, right? Within a large cavern, you find yourself on the shore of a placid underground lake. <clears throat> uh, you sense something large and ominous deep below the surface of these black waters. Alright, let's save it and let's go die. Oh, it's not a shark. It's a large tentacle creature. You wade into the black water. Something coils around your legs and quickly pulls you under and into the depths of the frigid waters. Your air quickly gives out and a dark oblivion takes over. Cool. That was a cool death. Little piano. Little piano. Today, death has claimed yes, yes, we get it. We get it. We are tracking. Uh, about an hour. Yeah, 56 minutes. Yeah, so a little less than an hour into this game. <clears throat> Alright, so I know in the original game I need an orb to freeze the lake. Uh, maybe I need to use the, uh, the elemental. Uh, let me look at this. I see symbols. It is hard to tell from this distance, but you think you see a skeleton chained to a rock. Perhaps you need a closer look. Somehow. Mm-hmm. A large waterfall empties out into the lake. Can I drink? That was nasty. You gulp down some of the water before spitting it out. Pah, it tastes terrible. Yeah, because it probably has large octopus poop in it. <laughs> A large water oh, empties out into the lake. Uh, I don't want to go that way just yet. But that was originally on the NES game. You could go that way. This was blocked. But well, let's go this way. A curving set of stairs lead up into a darkened passage. Save. <clears throat> a magnificent waterfall cascades from the mouth of an ancient stone statue, painstakingly carved into the stone wall. Below it, an un undulating, undulating, undulating mass of water hovers playfully above the river. Okay. Mass of water. What is that? All right. We got a symbol. This marking looks like a dwarven craftsman stamp. Do any of my spells are they similar to that? No, they're not. Can I do anything with that? I see another symbol. Have a cut a deep pharaoh into the rock of this cavern. An underground river rushes past you and into a crevice. A crevasse. Okay. Okay, so I just have that. Okay. I want to grab that. Hovering before you is an entity made entirely of water and mist. The liquid elemental continuously forms and reforms in a hypnotic way. Can I grab it? You lunge at the water elemental, succeeding only in getting drenched as the creature slips through your grasp. This will probably kill me, but I'll try using the torch on it. Yeah. Yep. The creature reacts angrily, producing a jet of water that douses the lit torch. Can I actually use another torch? I don't think so. Nope, that's it. You stumble out of the darkened room. Oh. Uh, okay. I can actually survive without a torch? Wide-eyed, you look around the chamber. Unfortunately, it is just too dark to make anything out. As you spin around to exit the chamber, you trip and fall headlong towards the floor. Your head impacts the ground so hard that it cracks open, sending blood and gray matter flying in every direction. 
Damn, that is an epic fall. I like the original music better. At least for this part. Yes, got it. Got it. Alright, let's load. Let's go back to our autosave here. Alright, so we need to somehow get the the ice elemental or get an elemental to freeze this lake for us. Uh, we can walk behind the, the waterfall, right? You attempt to traverse the pounding waters that fall from the waterfall. The sheer power of it pushes you back. Hmm. Let's look at our map. Where are we at here? So we have a symbol. We have a symbol. Interesting. We can't do anything with it. Oh, uh, I don't see anything that looks useful. Can I use this scepter? Does this do anything? What if I talk to it? You bow and introduce yourself to the elemental. It playfully dances away, squirting you at the water. You lunge at the water elemental, succeeding only in getting drenched as the creature slips through your grasp. Your river runs swiftly, swifty, to the right and through a large opening in the cave wall. Hold on a second. Can I walk? No, I can't walk. No. Uh, I can't punch it, right? No. Uh, let's see. Let's drink some water. You gulp down some of the fresh water. Cool. Use waterfall. Bring it to your face. Wash away the grit and grime from your adventure. Tall waterfall cascades down from the mouth of a statue. Can I do anything to the statue? No. Maybe I can start casting spells. Maybe I should try some spells here. Yeah, because I am running out of options here. Huh. Alright, let's, let's start some spells. I just don't know what would work. And... Should I cast it on a ruin? Uh, nope. Yeah, I'm not sure what these spells are useful for yet. No? So I'll try all three spells on the glyph first, and then I'll try it on the elemental. No? Okay, let's try the elemental. I need to figure out how to get these guys. Up. Oh. Your concentration is thoroughly compromised by the watery being, so you miscast your spell and create a small explosion. It squirts water in your eyes. I'm guessing he's going to do that with everything, isn't he? Concentration, yeah. What can I do to these guys to get them? What do I have? Um, I mean, I destroyed the bottles and vials I had, so I can't use that. I do still have this. Large gear has a series of runes and glyphs inscribed on it. And I can go back to the mirror room with this hammer and maybe get some get somewhere. Yeah. Ooh, can I equip all this stuff? Let's go ahead and equip all this stuff. You place a small helm on your head, it fits a bit snug. You lash the wooden shield security to your forearm. Huh. Alright, let's go back. Let's get out of here. In a large cavern, you find yourself on a placid lake. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um. What the hell? All right, let's look at our map really quick. All right, let's go back. Let's go back to the mirrors. Where are the mirrors at? Okay, uh, through the grotto. Oh, through the secret entrance. Let's try that. We do have these skulls, though. Let's go back out here. There's three spaces, I believe. Oh, we do have spells. Hold on a second. Let's try it on this. Oh, you focus your will on the stone hatch, whispering the words of the spell. A strange power flows out of you, enveloping the stone hatch. After a moment, it opens. Alright, we'll come back to that. There are these three spots here. And we have a skull with a symbol on it. So, I think we need to use it on one of these. Let's go resist your efforts to place it into the slot. After a puzzled moment or two, you give up trying. Maybe it's not the right slot? There we go. Alright. 
The skull snaps out of your hand and into the slot in the archway. There's a brief glow and a thrum of power fills the air. Something just beyond the door seems to have come alive. Yeah, so I just need two more. Okay. <clears throat> Cold mist. Uh, nothing else, right? All right, let's go in. Oh, okay, I have a gear. You lean in close, anxious to look inside the open hatch. This stone compartment harbors a strange mechanism, one comprised of levers, rods, and gears. Just like the levers in the original game, but this is way sooner. And we got the solution to the puzzle from the Sphinx. Here, we have no such uh, hints. Okay. What can we look at? What can we interact with? Series of gears, rods, other mysterious mechanisms. What about this? What is this? This stone button is intricately chiseled. Uh, no? You grip the gear with, and pull with all your might. Nothing happens. Is there, an, is there an option to put this other gear? Huh. Uh, I don't know. But these gears. What you expected hasn't happened. The gear did not do anything to the gear. All right. Oh, there's another sign. This marking looks like a dwarven craftsman stamp. What if I press this button? What happens? Oh, you thought you heard the hiss of steam coming from deep within the bowels of the castle, but it was nothing. Huh. Interesting. Hello. Hey, Crazy Kane. What's going on? Welcome to the stream. We are playing Shadowgate Remastered. Uh, about an hour ago, we finished the uh, classic original version that was released on Nintendo. So now we're attempting to work our way through this. But we are a little stuck. We are a little stuck. What if I punch it? What happens? Nothing. The gears try to spin. After that, the silence is almost deafening. I wonder if it's the same as the original game. Let's try it. Let's give it a try. So it was that one. That one. And then, uh, what did I have for the original game? What was the original puzzle? Where did I write it down? Oh, damn. So it was like that. It's one, two, and then bring this one back up. Oops. No, that's different. That's completely different. Oh, nice. So are the puzzles significantly different uh, then? Yeah, they are. They are. They are almost entirely different. I don't think I've run across a similar puzzle yet. Similar rooms, but each room has different items. It's It's odd. It's odd. I thought like, oh, you know, I played the original, I should be able to just fly through this game, but no, there's so many different things about this that they changed, and they added additional little side quests. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm good, thanks, by the way. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I was, uh, I was sick all last week. I usually stream on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Wasn't able to stream at all Tuesday and Thursday. And then uh, Saturday, yesterday, I was feeling good enough that I could uh, I could stream a little bit. But I'm still a little under the weather. I don't know if you can hear. I'm still a little congested, but I'm doing okay. I beat Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, yesterday. That was super tough because the translations are terrible. But, uh, yeah, and then I finished Shadowgate today, so now I'm trying to work on this. Oh, that's good. It keeps it fresh then for veterans. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I was a little worried that I'd wasted my money on a game that... Is basically a graphical upgrade so uh, not that I know your normal verse compare but I think I can hear a hint of a cold yeah I'm just a little congested a little congested all right so we have these three levers that are similar to the original game if I don't know if you remember I remember because I just played it like half hour ago but they're in a different spot and there's no hint from the uh, Sphinx but we have all these scrolls so, maybe? What if I press the button? What happens? Does it reset the levers? Yeah, it does. Yeah, you trigger the button with a punch. Grudgingly, the ancient mechanism begins to turn, but shudders to a halt almost immediately. A faraway screech signals something attempting to move and failing. Huh. I never got very far in the original, so I just assume I remember absolutely nothing. Oh, okay. Well, there was a scene in the original game that had three levers. Yorick startles you by saying, that didn't sound right. You might want to try again. Um, all right. I feel like a scroll will tell me what I need to know. Right? I feel like this one. 
A drawing of a castle with a single tall spire in the center. A single line points to the exact middle of the tower and next to it. These words three times right. Blah, 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 blah. Crazy cane is now falling. Cool, man. Appreciate it. Welcome to the stream. Enjoy. I play a lot of retro games. Well, I play basically exclusively retro games. So, you know, there's that. I do eventually want to start getting into indie games too, but for now, I'm kind of on an on a Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Genesis uh, kick right now. All the games that I never beat or played in, in my childhood, I am uh, trying to get through. With the exception of Shadowgate. I've beaten Shadowgate before. Alright. Let's see. Uh, three times right, then once pulled down, twice past midnight, points the ruined... I don't think this clue is for these levers. Three times right, three times right, then once pulled down, twice past midnight, points a ruined crown, light becomes dark, the kids, king said, no, this is not, this is not the right one. Uh, you play retro games, well here you go. I noticed that completion list is pretty retro. Yeah, yep, it is definitely retro. I'm sticking with NES for now, with the exception of obviously Shadowgate, but uh... I've got a list of uh, NES games I want to play through first, and then uh, I'll shift over and start doing some Genesis and SNES titles, and then I'll probably dabble in, like, TurboGrafx-16, Game Boy Advance, anything, really. Uh, cool with a name like that. I assume you also stream Retro Games, Retro Gaming Justin. Yeah, yeah. You should definitely follow Retro Gaming Junction. He streams a lot of uh, uh, retro uh, console games and also PC games. And he's actually about to stream Final Fantasy VI, which is one of my favorite, actually, I think my all-time favorite RPG. So, I'm definitely going to uh, stick around to watch that. But yeah, Simon's a good guy. Simon is retro gaming. I call him retro sometimes, call him Simon sometimes. Okay, um, okay, so that was a useless scroll. I suck. Yeah, Retro sucks bad. He is oh, just awful. Awful, awful person. <laughs> uh, when Majal Tail lights the northern skies. Oh, this is that weird riddle that just doesn't make any sense to me. Doesn't make any sense. Call me Camelio. Camelio? Me? Leo? Or Melio? While the writing is difficult to discern, danger is real. Uh, Retro, you're hosting a dude playing Yakuza 0. I was just playing that. Oh, Yakuza 0. He's probably hosting Cenotar. Uh, Cenotar is a really uh, big retro streamer, and he's been playing Yakuza for the past four or five days, I think. Hey, you said I was a decent human being. I take it back. I take it back. I'm deleting my, my tweet. Oh, God. Danger's real. Blah, blah, blah. Nope, that's not helpful. Uh, this is the brown I have your dog quest <laughs> no all right I do not think I have the the uh, the clue for this this particular puzzle just yet Let's see uh, yeah we don't we don't have, we don't have it all right let's back up we do have a gear that looks just like this though can I use this gear for anything no gear use on a gear right? No. Let's highlight some stuff. Mm, yeah, I do not see an option to put this gear anywhere. Yeah, okay, let's back out of this. Let's back out of this. Senator also sucks, do not follow him. He plays a lot of RPGs, but he is cursed with save game corruptions. Senator is, I don't know if he's necessarily cursed, I feel like he asks for it. Like, some of the games he plays, I'm like, what is this game? Like, he was playing uh, the Erythra? I call it the Urethra Chronicles. But it's like a Shara RPG. And I'm like, I have never heard of this game, but it looks super old. So I'm not surprised he's having save game problems. But yeah, he plays a lot of retro, I think almost exclusively PC RPGs. I don't think he does anything console. At least I haven't seen him do anything console. Thanks for the follow, Richard Gaines. Great getting follows while not putting in the work. <laughs> hey, let me shoot you a follow. I feel left out. 
crazy cane. Oop. Where are you at? Where are you at? Hold on a second. Am I spelling your name right? Crazy cane, two K's. Right? You're not live. Oh, hold on a second. Let me try it. Is it case sensitive? Let's try that. There are 99 plus channels. Jesus. Oh, is this you? I hope this is you. I'm about to. I'm gonna have to send you a follow. <laughs> With the uh, the goatee. Yeah. All right. I'm sending you a follow. I hope this is you. <laughs> all right. Your game has been saved. Um. Oh sweet love, it's a good day, thanks. I swear I didn't come here to fish for follows. Hey, as long as you're as long as you're streaming retro games or you know, games I'm interested in, you know, I'll follow. You gotta support small streamers. We gotta stick together. Oh. You know what? I used to do this in the old game, but let's burn all the rugs. The rug bursts into flames, sending a cloud of smoke up towards the vaulted ceiling. Oop, what is this? Oh. I think this happened when I put that skull there. The runes on the archway glow with a mystical energy. You feel more than here a low thrum of power. Can I, like, use it? Concentrating on the glowing runes, you gain a sense of benign power. The section of the castle is surely powered up. Okay. Alright, um... Uh, we are almost at the three-hour mark, so I'm going to... I'm going to go to the mirror place really quick and try to smash some stuff with, uh, with my hammer and see if that does anything. But barring that, I think we'll, 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 we'll go and wrap the stream up from there. So let's go and head over. I have variety streams, so I do whatever I'm playing, but I definitely have a fondness for retro shooters. Retro shooters. Have you ever played uh, Radiant Silver Gun? It was originally, I think it was an arcade game, but it got released on Sega Saturn, and then it got released uh, like on Xbox Live Arcade and you know the PlayStation Store. Radiant Silver Gun is by far my favorite shooter. Ah, it's a great game. It's a great game. If you stream retro games, you socialize, I will follow. If you piss me off, I will unfollow. And I have a really high degree of tolerance. <laughs> uh, figure mood. Oh, right, 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 right. Yep, you're going to shoot me. Shoot an arrow at me. Oh, hey, wait a minute. Now that I have a shield, I can actually make it up there. Let's, let's give it a try. Can't say I have. I don't do much console gaming. It looks good. Yeah. If you get a chance, if you get a chance, Radiant Silver Gun is an excellent shooter. It's a very good shooter. Like, you can gain levels. You have, like, six different types of weapons you can use. You can level them up as you're attacking them. There's ways to, like, you know, maximize points to gain levels. It's, it's incredible. It's a really good game. It never came out in uh, the U.S., it came out in on the Sega Saturn in Japan, but thankfully they released it on the Xbox Live and a uh, PlayStation Store. Um, let's let me save really quick. Can I go up here now that I have a shield? Hold on, let's try it. Oh, nope, hits me in the eye. Yeah. All right, let's go to this mirror section. Try to bust up some mirrors just to to see if there's any options. And barring that, we'll go ahead and wrap up the stream. Come on. Power in. Yeah. Alright, let's go in here. Okay, come on. Alright. We don't have the bottle to get across this rickety bridge. And then we have this area. Mirror should be coming up here. We've got the sewer. And then we go up. Probably difficult to hold up your shield while climbing. Yeah, it was worth a try. Okay. Um, I'm in this area. I broke all these mirrors, but nothing happened. In the original game, one of the mirrors was actually led you into another part of the castle. Let's break some shit. Nope. You rear back and strike the mirror. Refuses to break any further. There we go. You rear back and strike the mirror with the hammer. The glass falls away from the frame, revealing a door behind it. Metal door. Broken shards and mirrors. Okay, colorful prism. Alright. Uh, it's locked, but I bet I have a key. Nope, it won't fit. Alright, let's break some other mirrors. Give us about 120 years of bad luck here. Weapon bounces off the glass. It's enchanted. Okay. Probably gotta use a spell. Bounces off the glass. We're just gonna... Process of elimination. These are all enchanted. Uh, refuses to break any further. Okay, 
Well, we have a locked door, right? Locked. Yeah, we have a locked door. We have a couple of puzzles that we can solve. So there, we have options. We have options. So I'm going to go ahead and save it here. And uh, let's end the stream. Yeah, let's get out of this. Let's get out of this. Man, this game is so much more different than uh, the original Shadowgate. <laughs> so, all right, guys. Thanks for watching. Crazy Kane, thanks for hanging out. Retro, thanks for hanging out. Any of you other lurkers, thanks for hanging out. And let's find someone to host. Who do we got? Who do we got? Uh, we have G-Bag. Oh, Wu Chunk. Wu Chunk is streaming. He's streaming uh, Super Mario 64. He's streaming Fantasy Star for the last couple of days, but we'll go ahead and shoot him a raid. It was a pleasure. Looking forward to the next one. Yeah, man. I'll be on uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Uh, Saturdays and Sundays, I'm on from noon to 3, and then Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm on in the evening. So, Yeah, I always forget to raid and host also, but I've kind of made it a point. Like I have a little notepad that when I close the stream, I do this, this, and this. That way, I always remember. So let's go ahead and raid Wu Chunk. But yeah, um, yeah. As always, thanks for hanging out. Uh, if you guys have any game suggestions, send me a uh, message, and you know maybe I'll add it to the list. I'm always looking for new, weird, indie type games. So, yeah, the checklist. Let's raid Wu Chunk. All right, guys, we are out. Uh, I will see you guys later. Take care.